Hi everyone, it's Elizabeth from Alpus Astrology at alpusastrology.com. Thanks for joining me today. So today is my interpretation of the astrology for October 2022. As always, you have free will and uh, you can listen to what I have to say and then make your own interpretations uh, or desires uh, known at that time. Okay, so this month we start off with our first eclipse, right? At the end of the month, we have Mercury going direct. Um, and of course, uh, with the eclipse, we have a new moon and then we have a full moon in Aries. So let's get to it. The other big thing that is going on in the background, transit going on in the background, of course, is Saturn square Uranus. So October essentially will at least mark the end of a really close in orb uh, square with these two planets. And I'm giving it a birth uh, of a time period of the 2nd to the 12th of October for this final influence. So I would expect that October is going to see some, um, not necessarily conclusions with regards to our um, changing of the guard, where the old has to be replaced with the new. Although certainly, even in the past few months, uh, we have seen uh, major changes, unexpected changes uh, in shifts of power, right? So this will also be kind of like a grand finale in some ways. Uh, but the curtain will rise again, uh, for sure. And so it's again that big push. So there will be some kind of significant events happening in October with regards to that, the changing of the guard, right? There's still places that need to have those changes um, to bring in the new, basically, right? And in our own lives, we may also uh, have uh, that theme playing out. Are you clinging too much to old, traditional maybe archaic ways of doing things that really need to be changed up, right? Now we are looking at, in terms of degrees, for those that are interested, we're looking at the 18 degree mark here, right? And so for Saturn, we're looking at 18 degrees of Aquarius. And for Uranus, we're looking at 18 degrees of Taurus. And um, of course, we also know that the eclipse isn't too far off those degrees either. So on the 2nd of October, our Mercury retrograde, that is at 24 degrees of Virgo, even though it started in Libra, will be going direct. So I said in my earlier video that um, last month that I really felt this Mercury retrograde in Libra and uh, Virgo respectively was an important one, not only on the global stage, but also for us individually. So if you've been waiting to take all that careful information, that useful information, those facts that you've been gathering with regards to whatever it is. Specifically, it's probably gonna to be to do with a relationship, a money matter, the value of yourself, um, anything to do with the law, which is Libra. So you've collected all the information that you need, and now you wanna scurry back to present it as um, this is what I found. So that's going to mark a time when you feel you can really do that, the 2nd of October. Now, we still have to go through the shadow period, right? So the shadow period then takes us to the degree point that Mercury in Libra went retrograde in September. And that's at 8 degrees of Libra. So here we've got 8 degrees of Libra and 24 degrees of Virgo being important uh, degree points. So that's really going to be on the 17th of October. And I am going to predict that in terms of the world stage and mundane aspects, I would say that this probably day, if not a day on either side, will certainly bring something forward with regards to some kind of legal matter. The law is going to be involved here, but it's only after it's very scrupulously, see, and very critically, uh, and very analytically, that's Virgo that it went back to, right? Uh, has collected this information. So I expect some significant things around that time of the 17th of October. And certainly if you've got something in your life that you've been carefully 
uh, analyzing and looking at information. It could even be um, a research type project too, um, where you now can actually bring it forward more effectively. Technically, of course, the retrograde starts and stops on the 2nd of October. That's going to be all good news, by the way. So on the 8th of October, Pluto goes direct. So Pluto is a powerful transformational planet. Pluto relentlessly seeks the truth. So here we've got this now happening where perhaps uh, in the past months when Pluto was retrograde, some of that truth was held back in the shadows, right? Because Pluto also is the shadow side of life as well. But now with Pluto going forward, it's literally marching forward, right? With the truth, along with um, Mercury, which is going to still be in uh, Virgo, going forward with the facts. I like it a lot. So be encouraged for those folks that have, uh, say, in any matter in their life, just been stymied with regards to being able to move forward with something you know is the truth, um, that you know is important, but for some strange reason, you've been thwarted. This is your green light, specifically here on the 8th of October, right? And right the way through. Pluto will take some time to really start moving forward again, right? And get its power back. But any time a Pluto, any time a planet rather, is going either direct or retrograde, it's at that time period that the power is the greatest, right? And the more significant things that could potentially happen. So, hey, we could also have Pluto rules people in power. Uh, so as early as the 8th of October, we could have some more people being removed, uh, either forcibly or um, voluntarily uh, from a position of power, right? Because that's going to be working in conjunction with that whole background transit of the Saturn square Uranus, bringing in the new. So our first moon, our first lunation, is going to be on the 9th of October. It'll be a full moon in Aries at 16 Aries 32 minutes at 1.54 p.m. And that's specific daylight time. Now remember with a full moon, we have the moon, in this case in Aries, but then we've got the sun in the opposite sign causing this full moon. And so that sun is at 16 degrees of Libra. So here we're bringing in the Libra again, right? Relationships especially, but also the law, diplomacy, and on a lighter note, charm and sweetness. But it's going to be conjuncting a Venus, which is what its ruler is. So even though this is a full moon and it's going to be bringing a conclusion, a culmination of some sort, um, an ending into view, especially if you've got uh, something around those degree points, because the sun itself, the inner essence of this full moon, is conjunct not only Venus, which is a beneficial planet, it's called a lesser, lesser benefic, um, it's also the ruler of the sun. So I see this as a very positive thing. Um, this could, for some people uh, in their day-to-day -day lives, this could be a new relationship comes your way. Or in particular, maybe this is going to be a new start in an existing relationship. So for those that have been, you know, fraught with maybe relationship issues where things haven't been clear and you're just unsure, I would say this full moon could maybe end that confusion or end that uh, indecisiveness and have some sweetness come in here where maybe it takes, this relationship takes on a whole new shine and you're able to move forward in a, in a, a better way. Um, because this Venus is conjuncting the Sun in Libra, we're talking about balance. So perhaps there are going to be some people who finally find some balance in their relationships. And of course, that's all about having discussions, right? But the full moon in Aries itself is saying, I want to charge forward. I want to do things my way. I want to be independent. So there may be other folks that decide, um, I need to go my own way here and uh, blaze an independent path for myself, pioneering something new. Now, it's got to be sort of close to that, you know, I would say 15 to 17 degrees of Aries where it will have uh, a big impact. So say, for instance, you've got your ascendant is in Aries around those degrees. 
Um, this could be your green light where you are able to finally move forward. Mars rules this full moon. So then we look to see, well, where is Mars right now? And we see Mars is in Gemini and it's been in Gemini uh, for a little while and it's going to be in Gemini for quite some time. Mars in Gemini will go retrograde on the 30th of October and stay retrograde till about mid-January next year. But it will stay in the sign of Gemini till about the 25th of March, 2023. So if you've got any planets uh, in Gemini, uh, certainly around uh, almost any degree point, because it covers quite a geography, this Mars in Gemini, either retrograde or direct, um, there could be some significant uh, redoings and reconsiderations. Um, but because it is still going, it is going direct at this time, I would say that it's supporting this full moon in terms of especially directing energy towards anything Gemini. So that's messages, that's communicating, that's communicating with other people, right? Gemini is the twins, it's two people. So again, this lends itself to the idea of relationships. And as long as you're entering into dialogue, right? And this can also be taken up on, um, on a global level too, where dialogue is extremely important. Uh, dialogue, negotiation, negotiating contracts. Now, this Mars that rules the full moon is actually trine Saturn at this time. Trines are favorable energy. So this is encouraging anything to do with communications of any sort on any level, whether it's at a, a collective level or at a, um, a personal level, an individual level. So this full moon, I thought, was actually a really nice moon for moving forward for those that have been waiting to move forward. Uh, but also to move forward with negotiations and move forward with true um, back and forth communications, right? I guess you could call that negotiations. We also have now that uh, Mercury is direct, right? Still around the 24 degree of Mark of Virgo. Hey, that's trining Pluto and Pluto's direct. So these are this full moon I saw as a very positive full moon for relationships, especially if you open up dialogue and also for any kind of diplomacy as well. There's going to be so much favorable energy here where people will want to work together to bring something to a conclusion so that they can head off on a new path, right? So that's how I saw this full moon playing out. Uh, to my Canadian uh, viewers, I wanted to wish you a happy Thanksgiving. That's gonna be on the 11th of October this year. All right, let's go down now to the 19th. So on the 19th, we have Venus in Libra uh, trining Mars in Gemini. On an individual level, this is great energy for bringing in, um, I would say more flirting and um, sort of like the cocktail party. That's how I view this. Uh, when I put these two planets together, which are kind of the celestial lovers, in those two different signs, um, both Libra and Gemini tend to be more on the um, more superficial, but in a nice, charming way. Um, so I saw this as the cocktail party on the 19th, where you may very well meet, some of us may very well meet somebody new, where it's just as light and airy as opposed to deep and serious. Um, so this could just be socializing, uh, really nice socializing things on the 19th, um, or for some meeting somebody that uh, they can connect with for a love relationship. This is all going to be around the 24 degree mark uh, and it'll be the 24 degree mark of Libra for Venus and 24 degree mark of uh, Mars and Gemini. Now the next day the Sun will trine Mars and conjunct Venus now at 25 degrees. So this is a positive sort of follow-up from maybe whatever social event some of us may have gone to and uh, maybe met somebody, could even be meeting friends as well, good friends, um, where it's now taken up to, hey, let's make this happen, where the sun um, conjunct Venus really feels that they want to maybe be a little more charming and um, a little more social with whoever it was that maybe you met that day. Um, but again, very positive energy with regards to supporting uh, anything positive to do with relationships, friendships, that type of thing, 
or any activity with regards to socializing. And, um, you know, we've all been really restricted, uh, you know, really even over the summer and that with things happen, other things happening. Um, so yeah, I would say that sort of 19th and you could take a birth of a few days there, like say, take it from the 18th to the 20th would be great days to say, have a social event of some sort for those folks that do want to plan anything around that time. Uh, the 23rd of October, we have Saturn now going direct and it's at 18 degrees of Aquarius. So I think on the collective level, on the world stage, uh, this, this day or days around it may actually represent uh, another um, more concrete, um, clearly spelt out change of some old guard. And it could be very unexpected, right? Because when we look at Aquarius, which is where Saturn is here going direct, um, it's at 18 degrees. And of course, we have an eclipse coming up at the end of the month at 16 degrees, not far off that. So this may be unexpected, surprising change of guard. And let's hope it's voluntarily um, coming about around this day where uh, somebody who realizes they need to step down does uh, with grace and charm. Of course, that's the other thing that anything to do with Libra can do is it can bestow a lot of grace and charm. All right, so then we look at the 25th, which is the day of the new moon eclipse uh, at 3.49 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time at two degrees of Scorpio, zero minutes. What I thought was interesting was that we have the sun and the moon and Venus sandwiched by Mercury now direct at 22 degrees of Libra on one side. And then on the other side of the sandwich, we have the south node um, at 13 degrees of Scorpio. I really, the, the, the word that came to my mind was counsel. I saw this as some kind of council. Maybe it's a council of nations. Maybe it's a local council. Maybe it's a family council for individuals. Um, but this is a whole new start with regards to uh, anything to do with um, our psychological selves. Um, certainly Scorpio can also rule, you know, the deeper aspects of life and it can also rule money, right, as well. But I really saw this new moon as some kind of, I think it's a world council of some sort that's going to get together and really produce some fabulous, important things. Because although it's wide, Saturn will be trining a direct Mercury at 22 degrees of um, Aquarius and Libra now, right, respectively. So we now have, we now have not only do we have Mercury out of shadow, yay, uh, but we also have it back in Libra, the law. So, and of course, if you think of Saturn, Saturn also has a lot to do with rules and regulations. So I think this new moon eclipse is going to herald some kind of new rules and regulations issued, uh, maybe even dictated from a council of some sort. And um, because Libra is very much involved here, this is again, the law. But again, I love this, this new moon eclipse is really good too. So for those folks that say, um, have something around the two degree mark of Scorpio, depending what it is, this could be a whole new beginning. And for those Scorpios that were born, um, say at the beginning uh, of the Scorpio season, um, this could have a whole new start for you with regards to being able to move forward in any way that you want. Um, and I think there's a lot of Scorpios that probably really do need not only a new start, but a really good new start. Like this is support. When you've got the sun, the moon, um, Mercury, Venus, and the south node all together, it's saying, you know, let, let's have bygones be bygones, or let's let that old thing that happened go, no problem. And let's just move on from that. That's kind of what I get the impression of this is, not only um, on a collective level, but also on an individual level. Okay, so the 27th, we have uh, Mercury 
that is in Libra at 25 degrees will be trining uh, again, trining um, Mars. So these are the celestial lovers again. So maybe some kind of social event, this is individual of course, that you went to around say the 18th, 19th or 20th of October um, could have somebody maybe reaching out to you because this is now uh, Mercury uh, kind of reactivating the Venus Mars trine. Now it's Mercury trining Mars. So this is forward movement. And the 27th is before actually Mars goes uh, retrograde, right? So it's still before the official retrograde. And uh, so I saw this as just really messages coming in, charming messages, sweet messages coming in, um, probably as a result of whatever happened around the 19th. So we could take that out to the global collective level or individual level. So look to see what you have around, say, um, we had the 24 degree mark when it was Venus, Mars, and this is 25 degrees. So let's take it from 23 to 26 degrees uh, of Libra and Gemini respectively uh, to have some kind of more, more important uh, significant effect for you. Okay, so we've got the 29th and we have Jupiter retrograde now at 29 degrees of Pisces. And 29 degrees of any sign is very much sort of a, a culmination of the sign's energies, um, but it is called a critical degree. So this is coming up, it's butting up right next to the Mars retrograde, which will happen the next day. So I see these two things going together, the Mars going, the, the Jupiter going uh, now backing into 29 degrees of Pisces, and then the Mars going retrograde as sort of um, consecutive events. So this is basically having us to be compassionate. So there may be something that comes up in the world that really requires uh, a compassionate eye and action at this time. Now, Jupiter will stay in Pisces till the 21st of December, at which time it will finally go into zero degrees of Aries and then of course kick off the Jupiter in Aries. And I did do a video on this for those that have not had a chance to watch it. I'll put the link below in the text box, uh, but I won't go into all the sun signs and ascendants as well. I also did one for Jupiter in Taurus too, uh, which starts sort of May time next year as well. So I've covered the, the, the next two Jupiters uh, going into different signs for you. Uh, should you like to look at it? And of course, I go into all the sun signs and ascendants as well. I'll put both those links in the text box below for you. Okay. Um, yeah, the other thing is for those folks that say have something around the 29 degree mark, although Jupiter is retrograde, it's hard to get a bad aspect from it. So this, for those folks that say, say it's your ascendant around 29 degrees of Pisces, this could be with a second time with Jupiter being on top of your ascendant, say, um, giving you another dip of luck and benefits. All right, so we're getting close to the end of the month here. On the 30th, like I've mentioned a couple times, we have Mars and Gemini now going retrograde in the early morning Pacific Daylight Time. And this is a Sunday. Now, we know that um, a lot of places in the world celebrate Halloween. And um, I would say that probably a lot of folks will be celebrating that weekend. So I would say the weekend of probably the 28th, 29th is when the actual parties will take place. So this Mars retrograde, I would say, is going to put potentially um, from a really positive standpoint, especially from an individual level, I saw this as folks really reconsidering um, and, and rethinking maybe some existing way they thought before. It's re I thought this is really rethinking the way I'm doing something. Now, you would have to look to where is Mars and Gemini in your chart. So look to, in your chart to see where Gemini essentially is. Because it's going to be that area of life. Uh, in your life that actually has you rethinking things, right? So let's say it is the fourth house. So the fourth house represents things like your home, it can represent your mother and your family too. But it may have 
if you've got your Mars in your fourth house, it could may have you reconsidering buying a home or selling a home. And it doesn't mean you're going to do one or the other. It just has you rethinking things. Mars is great because it's action. But when it's retrograde, it says, yeah, I'm, I'm going to take action, but I need to put some energy into thinking about this, especially since we're in Gemini, right? Gemini is about our thoughts. It's about the way we write things, the way we present ourselves. So it's, it's writing as well. So for some folks, um, let's say it's in your third house or your ninth house. So these are the houses of communications for sure, but they're also writing and publishing respectively houses too. So for some folks, you may be literally deciding to rewrite some things and that's a positive thing, right? But I think overall, this is going to have us rethinking as a nation and maybe as a, a world, how we've been viewing things, uh, especially messages that have been coming in and rethinking about, well, what do I think about those now, right? So you're going to see that playing out on the stage during the retrograde, again, from the 30th of October, right the way through mid-January. Uh, 2023. So it's really going to be more like February, March, where this whole Mars is going to be going forward and giving you the impetus to move forward with whatever uh, house area of your life that Mars sits in, uh, in your respective individual charts, right? We can leave comments and, and certainly discuss this back and forth over the next few months. Um, and I, of course, I'm always interested in uh, what other folks have to say. So feel free to leave comments. So the other thing that we have happening uh, around this uh, retrograde is we have the Sun conjunct Venus. That's at 7 and 9 degrees Scorpio respectively. We have Mercury also in Scorpio now at 1 degree. Um, and then the transiting moon is going to be conjunct Pluto. So this is a powerful point. This is at 26 degrees of um, Capricorn. So let's just go back to Capricorn a little bit here for those late born Capricorn. So those born, you know, um, well into January. Um, this could be also um, an aha moment of some sort that is necessary for you to maybe um, do some planning. That's how I see this going with the sun or the moon rather conjunct Pluto. It's bringing in some kind of emotional illumination of some sort that could be transformational. But because you've got the Mars retrograde on top, some Capricorns are going to get the opportunity may, maybe to redo some things here, especially as it applies to writing, communicating or messaging of any sort. Um, it can also, you know, go out as far as generalizing it to sales and commerce as well. It covers those areas too. Um, so the exact uh, conjunction of the transiting moon and Pluto at 26 degrees of Capricorn will be at 2.23 a.m. Uh, Pacific Daylight Time on the 31st of October. So I'm going to leave uh, that there and uh, just say that that end of the month could bring some emotional truth to light, right? We talk about um, when we take the moon up to a global level, we're talking about the people. And then when we're talking about Pluto, we use one word, and that's the truth. So the truth is going to be revealed to the people, maybe literally on Halloween, the 31st of October, 2022. As always, I love to do people's charts. Astrology is my most favorite thing to do. Uh, and I want to thank all my viewers, uh, as well as my listeners on Spotify. My goodness, that channel has grown exponentially. Thank you so much. Um, so I'm going to say goodbye for now. Uh, we're now in the fall season, and uh, it's time to get cozy up here in uh, the Northern Hemisphere. And the Southern Hemisphere, it's time to go down to the beach, I guess. All right, everybody, I'm sending you lots of love. Please take good care of yourself. Um, we've got a big packed month uh, in November with a major total eclipse coming, right? And that's going to be in Taurus, conjunct Uranus. Bye for now. And we will talk to you next month. All right, so let's get into the ascendant signs or sun signs, or both. All right, Virgo. So this full moon in Aries is in your eighth house. And you've got Venus there too. So I really saw this, even though it's a full moon, 
Um, I saw it as, as a culmination of money. Maybe you're going to pull the trigger on some of your investments, Virgo, and um, cash in some money. Uh, I would say that's going to be a favorable way to use this full moon. Um, or you could just decide to change up. Maybe your 401k isn't working for you and you decide, look, I want to change a few things here. Females could be important in that. So there might be uh, a beneficial female that can help you change up maybe some of your investments as well. But I mean, eighth house also rules sex. So Venus can represent um, in the eighth house, a sexual relationship, or at least a very deep relationship with somebody that could move into your life, even though this is a full moon. It can also be for those folks that have had some kind of drama surrounding their shared resources. This is the ending of that drama, right? It's a full moon. So you no longer have to deal maybe with another person with regards to the shared resources that you had. That all just ends at this full moon, um, which is on the 9th of October. So the ongoing square between Saturn and Uranus is in your 6th and ninth house. You have uh, Uranus and Taurus is nicely trining your sign. So this is Uranus saying, I'm going to make positive changes for you, right? Um, and it will be sort of in the ninth house. So really, I'd like to see the ninth house in this context. Having a slightly different philosophy will be a benefit to you and will actually help enlighten you. Uh, on a surface level, foreign people and foreign things could posi pos positively help you see things in a different light. Um, I really like that a lot. It's, it's really cool. But the square is a square. So I would say that um, although you've got positive effects from Uranus and Taurus, the Saturn may uh, put a damper on things where um, maybe even some folks that are doing, say, advanced degrees, where, yeah, you're being given unique opportunities, but your, your supervisor or whatever isn't supporting you and you have to work hard to get their support or they're criticizing you, that type of thing. It can also uh, bring in um, delays with travel. So maybe you want to take this trip of a lifetime, but you're not able, you're not able to see that you can do it even though you want to, but that's all waning. So those challenges that I'm talking about, this is kind of the last month where we're going to have a direct hit. They'll still be around. Uh, this square, but not in terms of direct. And of course, the degrees we're talking about, um, well, this square has been go on, going on for over a year, so it's hovering around the 16 to 18 degree mark. So you'd really have to have something like that in Aquarius and or Tau Taurus to have a direct effect. Otherwise, you know, these things don't really affect you directly. Um, all right. So Mars uh, is in Gemini for some time and it will go retrograde on the 30th of October. And it squares your sign and it's in your 10th house. So this could have you returning to an old career that you had. It could have a male contacting you uh, in your career, maybe approaching you about negotiating to work with them. So a male could feature in your career here for some reason, where you may be uh, negotiating, renegotiating. Um, it could also have you taking on some kind of writing projects or even speaking projects as well with regards to your career. But as it's a square, it's going to require you probably to do some uh, serious thinking about things. So Gemini can represent that but it also is going to require you to work with others. Gemini is also always about the other person too. Okay. So when we look at this new moon eclipse in Scorpio, it's your third house. And this says we want a new start here. We also have Venus is right around uh, this eclipse as well. So this is a new start with regards to potentially your neighborhood. So, so for, for some Virgos, the end of October could herald a time where you're going to change your neighborhood and start new somewhere else. It could have a new start with regards to your siblings. And it could have you also starting a writing project. The third house does, the third house is actually ruled by Gemini. 
And so it's communication, it's writing. It can also be sales and commerce. So for some Virgos, it may be a new enterprise that involves com commerce or sales that starts up at this time. You get the green light, right? It's an eclipse. Now, Pluto, that's direct at this eclipse, will be at 26 degrees of Capricorn. And it will be trining you. Virgo. So for those Virgos that maybe have a sun, um, or even those folks that have a Virgo ascendant somewhere around the 26 degree mark, this is fabulous energy. This is powerful people aiding you. This is powerful energy. Um, this is transformational energy. So whatever it's forming a trine with in your uh, chart, Virgo, it's super positive. It brings in an element of truth, right? And brings in transformation where it's needed, but it does it in such a positive way. Yeah, I really like that. Take care, Virgo. So that wraps up um, my October 2022 view of the astrology. Uh, next month is a big month. We have the eclipses, uh, the eclipses continuing, uh, in particular a total eclipse on the 8th of November at 16 degrees of Taurus with Uranus conjuncted. Big changes are afoot. And in fact, that eclipse will certainly exert an effect probably for six months, especially if you've got something around that degree point. All right, folks, I'm sending you lots of positive energy and lots of love. Leave me comments. I would love to do your chart if you would like me to do that. You know, I just love astrology. I can't get enough of it. Please take care of yourself and we will see you next month. Bye for now.